One of our biggest fears as pet parents is that our dogs are going to eat too fast and it's not going to go well for our dogs. It is going to get stuck on the way down and either choke them or it's gonna come up on chewed all over your carpet, all over your floor. And that is something that Gemma and I have experienced. Now I've had a lot of dogs over the years. Gemma's the first dog that has struggled with eating too fast and having it backfire on her. I have a lot of dogs that eat fast and we've had to slow them down. But Gemma has really struggled with it since she was a baby. Now, she started off by eating kind of slow, but her big sister gobbled up her food and she learned from her. And so she had an issue where she was eating too fast for her and it would get kind of stuck in her throat. She wouldn't chew and it would get stuck there. And on one occasion, I actually had to come and kind of give her the Heimlich. I had to press on her tummy to get it to come out because she had it stuck in her throat. I put my hand there. I could feel it. We got it right out. It wasn't a problem, but it was a scary thing for us to go through. And before and since, she has also gotten it kind of stuck in her throat and kind of choked herself. It hadn't been that scary, but she choked herself and she would often vomit up some of that unchewed food. So this is how we went about slowing her down. We know that the, the key here is to slow them down. And we've talked about puzzle feeders and slow feeders before. I love those. My dogs love those. It's great for enrichment. We have review videos on some really great ones that I would love for you to check out. That's a great first solution or a great first step. But beyond that, and more importantly than that, we actually started hand feeding Gemma. And I had been hand feeding my girls when we started to realize this was, you know, a, a speed issue. We need to slow them down a little bit. It also really worked well to our training. So I have videos on how you can be using feeding time for training as well. You can check those out. I would hand feed Gemma and I had to be very clear about how much I was giving her because I hand feed both Lucy and Gemma and I will take a handful of food. They'll do a trick. They'll get their their bit of food. I can give Lucy more than I can give Gemma. Gemma has to have a much smaller amount. I can take a full handful and give it to Lucy, no problem. She eats it, we're good. I give that same amount to Gemma and just her, whatever's going on on the inside of her little throat here is just not working the same way that Lucy's does. And she will cough, she'll sputter, she'll choke a little bit. We haven't had any huge occurrences, but she will, if there's too much, she just can't do it. So I have to force her to slow down by giving her less food. So I am taking a handful of food and then I'll drop about half of it out if I am going to be giving that to her. So she gets about half of a handful every single time she's getting it. And as she gets older, maybe she can have a little more. Um, we don't give her a ton as we're doing this. And that forces her to then slow down. If I want to give her more for a reward for one trick, I'll give her part of it, wait for her to finish swallowing, and then I'll give her the next part. But even so... I have to make sure she has fully chewed her food. So even in the last few days, she's several months old now. In the last few days, I've noticed she has gotten the last bit of food that I'd given her from her bowl and she looks up waiting to do her next trick, but she's got some of it squirreled away in her mouth. She's just waiting for that next bite. And so she has not fully finished chewing and swallowing before she tells me that she's ready for more. She is a little preemptive in telling me she's ready for more. And I've noticed a couple times that I've, I've given it to her because I thought she was done and it became a problem. She choked a little bit. So now I'm starting to wait to make sure she is fully done. And so if I pause for a minute, she'll kind of look at me and she'll chomp a little bit if she still has it in there because if she has to wait, she might as well have a snack, right? And that way I know, oh, okay, we're not quite done yet. We need to make sure we're giving it a little bit more of a pause, a little bit more of a break so that she is fully clear of that food. There's nothing else in her mouth. There's nothing else sitting in her throat. Then we can move on to the next bite. So you're going to have to take the time and effort to learn your dog's style. It's probably going to be a couple week process. This is not like a real quick, oh, I automatically know this. You probably don't. So at that point, you do want to hand feed. You want to give small amounts and you can increase it until you discover that there's an issue. So you're going to know where that line is by trying and testing it. Start smaller, a couple pieces at a time, and then build up to see where that amount is going to fit for your specific dog. And again, this is very dog to dog, breed to breed, all those things. And so then you're going to have to make sure that they have fully chewed and swallowed before you give them the next part of their meal so that they're not hurting themselves, spacing it out. Is this going to make dinner time 10 minutes instead of two minutes? Yes, it is. But the safety of our dog is going to be our priority here. And our training is a really good thing to be implementing into mealtime as well. 
So hand feeding is going to slow them down. It's going to make sure that they understand that you're in charge of their food. So they're not going to grab for their food. They're not going to, you know, get upset if you try to take food away from them. It's really, really good for working on our food manners, making sure nobody else is getting hurt. We're not going to be resource guarding all those things because they're getting hand fed with this. And so you just need to see what's going to work best for your dog a little bits at a time and increase it until you discover what that line is. And then make sure you adhere to that and give them plenty of time to digest that and to put it through their system as they are eating it. And then, of course, we also want to make sure that there is no rough housing right after meals. They're supposed to wait a little bit of time so that their stomachs don't flip. Look that up. It's a terrifying thing, and all dog parents should know about it. And that way, we are not, you know potentially causing any issues with their digestion right after they are eating. Again, I am not a vet. I am not a professional in this space. I just know that this is something you should be looking up and speaking to your vet about to make sure you're protecting your dog. But you want to make sure that they're kind of calm after they eat in general. But also for this, that, that you know, rapid heavy movement, if they're playing with you or playing with their sibling or whatever, that could potentially cause some digestion issues as well and have things come back up. So just make sure that you are taking the time and effort to learn what their pace is and what their rate is and then really implementing that into how you are feeding your dog. And then if they get really good as they're continuing to grow, then maybe you could try some puzzle feeders. So I always recommend starting with that hand feeding first, then going into the puzzle feeders if you have a dog that is choking on their food frequently. Other puppies that are not, jump right into the puzzle feeders. By all means, go for it. My girls love it. Your puppies will probably like it as well. And then if you are having issues like Gemma does, she's looking at me right now, you can start off by hand feeding and then work up to the puzzle feeders and then work up to whatever it is. If your dog learns how to settle and eat food slowly, you can put a bowl down when they get older in life. If not, this is just something you're going with. This is what we're doing to protect those puppies. So drop your questions down below. If you want to talk about those puzzle feeders, you can check them out in our playlist for dog must-haves. We've got reviews. We've got different options, different ways that they work, different ways that you can be leveraging these. And so we are happy to test out those products for you if you've got questions on any of those or look any of those up. And we are dropping daily videos to help you navigate the life of being a dog parent so that you and your dog can thrive in this world. We are going to see you in the next episode answering your questions and making sure we're making the most out of our time with our pups. We'll see you there.